This is Kelly Pickle, assisting with the Oral History Program with the Battleship New Jersey in Camden, New Jersey. Today is Thursday, August 8, 2019. We are on board the Battleship New Jersey, and our interview guest is Jay Roach from Kingston, Oklahoma. Mr. Roach served during the 1980s commission as a sig signalman. Welcome home, Mr. Thank Roach. You. Um, to get us started, what is your current age? 55. Okay. When did you first enlist? November 1983. How old were you then? 19. Great. What was your inspiration for joining the Navy? Honestly, travel. <laughs> yeah. Is there a reason you chose the Navy over the other branches? Um, well, I was in military school also, and so I'd been kind of been in the Army thing. Uh, my father was a career military also. He was Army, so, and plus it just, I, I like the beach. I like the water, so. Okay. Where did you go to boot camp? Orlando. Do you have any stories from boot camp that you'd like to share? Um, obviously, usually, especially back in the 80s when my hair was real long. I got there, my hair was real long. And I've got some pictures uh, in my yearbook where it shows me at the beginning and then at the end as my hair is falling to the ground. and. Um, that's probably the biggest, that's when you know that that you joined the military, they cut all your hair off back then, so that's probably the biggest thing for me. And then my first liberty in school, so. Anything you'd like to share about that? Probably not for the camera, no. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> um, did you go to A school? Yes. Where did you go for A school? Orlando. Okay. Um, can you tell me a little more about your experience in that? Um, just, um, you know, a lot of class, um, just learning to, to uh, you know, have a little bit of freedom in the military. You know, it's the first time I had a taste of freedom, really. I went to, went to school and um, just, uh, you know, just class and just getting used to the military life, you know. Um, Probably, you know, some of my friends. I'm still good friends with some of the people I went to. So those, those are last a lifetime. But probably just probably the first, the first, uh, you know, sense of that I was free for to do what I wanted to in Florida every once in a while. So, yeah. Okay. Um, after a school, where did you go? So, um, so on my dream sheet, I put, you know, I had three list of three. Uh, Portugal, and, and so I, I chose Long Beach. Well, Long Beach was my number one destination. I didn't know what the battleship was or anything like that. And uh, but anyway, so I got Long Beach, and I was the ship when I when I got assigned to it was um, just off the coast of Beirut. And then we initially, well, when the when the Marines got bombed in Beirut, uh, Reagan sent the ship over there from Sigonella, Sicily, I believe it was, and uh, and went to blowing blowing up Beirut for a little while and uh, so they sent me from a school straight to Norfolk to kind of get trained and, and wait around a little while but anyway by the time I got done being in Norfolk it was over base, basically in Beirut they sh sent the ship home so uh, I ended up going from Orlando to Norfolk to Long Beach to my duty station when it was when I got there my ship was in port so yeah Okay. Um, do you remember your reaction when you found out you were assigned to the New Jersey? Yeah. So I didn't really, I didn't really recognize the significance of the Iowa class battleships. Then, you know, just a 19-year-old kid leaving Oklahoma, joining the military. Um, I mean, I, obviously, I knew about the Missouri because it's the Japanese surrendered, and but I really didn't know the significance of the ship, the size of it, or anything like that. Um, so. Just excited I was going to California. Excited I got my number one destination choice, you know. And uh, um, so I didn't really, you know, feel anything excited until the first time I saw it. You know? Can you tell me about that when you first saw it in person? Yeah, I, I was just, it was just like a wow moment in my life, you know. Um, um, I remember coming through the gates and then. I was visualizing some of the smaller ships where they're in destroyers and stuff, and and then uh, remember when I first saw it, and I was like, "Wow, that's that's where I'm going." It was just you know, 
almost 900 foot long a beast and and just a sense of wow I'm going to be serving on the on a battleship so that's when I recognize the significance of that ship you know what it done what it been through so yeah it was a moment I'll never forget so yeah how was the adjustment period of when you first came on board the ship and getting used to life on board? Yeah, you know, I think I think the thing that I remember the most about it was obviously getting getting acquainted with going from my my duty station, which was the O three level signal bridge, to um, to my rack um, and finding the different ways to the galley and all that, you know, and. Uh, um, but my, but I do remember my the guys that were in my division, um, every one of them, and I'm still really good friends with some of them. They just I mean it was just like I just walked right into into home. And yeah, so it was it was cool. Could you tell me more about your duty station? Okay, so um, O3 level signal bridge right underneath the the captain's uh, uh, throne. Um, so. Um, you know, a small, small little area. Uh, you know, not much daylight at all. Um, but it was, you know, where I where I was at the majority of the time. Even if I wasn't on duty, even if we were out and I didn't have duty at that time, I was still up on the bridge. You know, I mean, um, I had the best best seat in the house, I think. Yeah. So, what sort of things did you do as a signalman? Well, I mean, it was uh, from ship to ship communications, um, um, flag hoist, obviously, from ship to ship. Uh, um, you can see the flags from, you know, miles, um, especially using the big eyes. And then, um, you know, from close range, you know, semaphore flag for semaphore flags and uh, and the uh, flashing light, uh, which all took. Uh, I mean, it wasn't really that big of a job. It wasn't really that big a deal, so it was cool. Could you tell me about your general quarters? Just always a rush. Yeah, just always a rush. Um, nothing in specific stand out. Um, you know, a few circumstances where maybe some of us dragged in a little bit late from a late night or whatever. And I remember uh, my senior chief, he was, he was just a really old veteran who uh, just, you know, was really took care, who, who took care of his guys and sometimes would kind of overlook a little here and there, you know, so. But just every morning just getting together, you know, checking in, make sure everybody was safe. Okay. Are there any uh, initial stories that you'd like to share about your time on board the battleship? Yeah, well, I mean, um, I guess one of the first things we did, my first, uh, short cruise we did was a um what they were calling a peace in the pacific tour of 1984 um and so we went up you know up the coast of, um came into san francisco um and i guess i guess on that trip two things that i went on was coming into san francisco coming under the golden gate bridge um the people that were lined up on the pier um, the, my, my ship at that time was the signal ship of that particular little cruise. And um, so um, it, it, pulling in there, seeing all the people that were there and the different ships, different boats that were out there, the fire boats and all that spraying. And, you know, I, I'm just a 19 year old kid from Oklahoma and, and seeing, and it just, it was the first time I really felt a sense of, of, of uh, you know, need or you know something I was doing something really good, really cool. So, yeah. And then Hawaii, the first time I pulled in Hawaii, there was probably twenty thousand people lined up on the pier when we pulled in, and um, you know, a big parade that weekend and all that. And so that whole trip, kind of a sense, it was a really cool way to get started. Yeah. What would you say was your favorite port of call? It's always Hawaii for me. Yeah. Yeah. Just because it was the first one, or one well, of the first? Well, yeah, I mean, just, I mean, just Hawaii was just, it's Hawaii. People pay thousands of dollars to fly over there and spend a week, and I went there twice free and worked and got paid for it, and, yeah. yeah. Great. Um, did you ever travel through the Panama Canal? 
No. Okay. I didn't make that one. Did you ever cross the equator? No, I didn't make that one. Okay. So you never... I would uh, never show back with you, no. Okay. No. Too many stories. I'm glad I didn't, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, did you ever, during this time, have any Soviet encounters that you remember? Uh, you know what? Actually, um, yeah, actually, we we uh, got within visual of a couple of of a couple of Soviet ships before. Um, Soviet ships, uh, I believe, a couple of times Canadian in the Royal Navy also. And yeah, but um, yeah, there was a, there was one time I remember specifically that we did. Yeah, because I think it was. I mean, it, it actually wasn't that far off the off the uh, coast of. Uh, Long Beach either. It was, I think it was out past the Catalina Islands or maybe almost at Hawaii. We saw them out there, I think it was. Yeah. What happened when you nothing, saw them? I don't, nothing, no big, just, it was just another boat. Okay. Yeah, basically. Um, did you, uh, were you ever able to witness the firing of the 16-inch guns? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Could you tell me what that was like? Yeah, so the first time, um, the initial time, um, um, getting ready, the preparation for it. Uh, we were off the coast of the Catalina Islands, I think. We were doing a uh, um, demo out there, ammunition demo out there, and um, there's a certain area of the Catalina Islands in Southern California that's um, for that you know, specific thing. And uh, um, so I'm getting ready. Um, I believe it's five beeps that go off before they shoot. Um, but anyway, I'm putting my, my earplugs in because I was close, really close to the uh, number two and the number three turret up front. So I'm putting my earplugs in and my right one, I didn't have all the way in, it went off. And I remember it knocked my equilibrium plumb off and I was just <laughs> out of there for a little while. But, um, that definitely a significant moment that on my on my first trip, and then just the uh, just the sheer power of what you know what those guns can do just to this boat if they and when they go off. So yeah, it was it was awesome. Yeah. Did what were you able to see when that happened? Did you actually see them? Oh, I saw, yeah. I um well besides the projectile, mm -hmm. I mean you can't see you're obviously you're not gonna see that, but yeah. the uh, the sound the 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 smoke, the fire, um, the repercussion of it, just everything, yeah, it was, it's, it's pretty amazing, yeah. Were you able to see the five inch guns firing? Yes, I did, yeah. How did that compare? It, nothing, nothing, nothing compared to that. Probably the, the, the two systems that I enjoyed watching more than anything, obviously the 16s, but then was the, probably the, the Tomahawk missiles when they, when we practiced with those. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, just, you know, I mean, it's just uh, really not, not that big of a projectile. I think, you know, maybe two foot long projectile, maybe a little bit smaller, I'm not sure. Um, just knowing something like that, the power that it literally, you know, has in its hands is, is, is unbelievable. But it was just like a big fireworks show. Yeah, it was cool. Do you have any particular stories about any of the weapons firing, anything that you remember? Um, you know, I mean, there was just a couple of times, you know, when we were loading and unloading, a uh, projectile would, would fall, you hear about it or whatever, and, 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 you know, and then, you know, in the 19, I think it was 1989, the USS Iowa actually had an incident on board where one of the project, 16 inch projectiles fell and blew up and killed some of the sailors and stuff. So, I mean, just, just the sheer power of what that particular, so there was a few times I heard it hit the ground, you know, hit the deck, and uh, thinking, wow, that could have been close. But, uh, yeah, just really, uh, just the whole, just the whole being on that thing was, was you know, just something different. Something, something I tell everybody about, absolutely. Okay. Uh, so, were you actually ever in Lebanon? So, no. Okay. So, um they, they, when I went to Norfolk, mm -hmm. um, they were actually had me assigned to uh, helo out to the ship and everything. And but uh, by the time um, the orders, every time, by the time everything come come around, um, um, they had already 
threw up the white flag and Ronald Reagan, who was my commander in chief then, um, sent the ship back to Long Beach. So, okay. Yeah. Um, were you present on the ship for any USO shows? Yeah, um, yeah there was a uh, Bob Hope and some, I can't remember who else was there, but, he, but I met him, he was on board. Um, um, uh, some of the people that I met on board at that, that particular time, like Tom Selleck, uh, Marcus Allen was a Hall of Fame running back for the Los Angeles Raiders at the time. Um, um, man, I can't remember if I, I can't remember any other shows that I, I saw, but yeah. Could you tell me a little bit about the Bob Hope show? Yeah, it wasn't for me. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I was a, I was a, I'm a, I was a headbanger and. And I, w I just, yeah, I wasn't, that wasn't my thing. As a matter of fact, I think I might have had, I think I might have had to stay on the, on the duty station at that time. I can't remember. Okay. Yeah, yeah that was just, that was just not my thing. So. Were any of the shows your, would you say your thing? No, you know, I don't, I don't, um, you know, the, uh, to be honest with you, the, the best times I had, on, I mean, as far as special things that we did, we always had a, a, a special little cruise that we could take our families on or our friends on. And things like that, you know, where watching uh, the reaction of, you know, my my family and my friends and stuff who'd come on board and take those little, just to be a little like a, a half a day cruise, you know, out and to run and come back and feed everybody and everything on deck. And it was those I remember because just the the look at the you know looking at the people, looking at their faces. Cause that, I mean, and when you walk aboard this thing, it's just like wow, you know. So yeah, um, but no particular show. Okay. Um, did you ever have any interactions with your captain on board that would have been folk or sorry, Milligan? Yes. So Yeah, so um, because you know, because his throne was right above me, I saw him nearly every day, nearly every morning. Um, mm -hmm. I remember Captain Milligan, uh, uh, white haired guy, short and, and I think I think he died not too long ago. I can't remember, uh, I think Skipper died in, I don't know, 2013, 2012, somewhere like that. But anyway, it's just a short guy, a small guy, um, really good guy, really good, really good man, yeah. Yeah, but I have, you know, I'm soft for any officers in the military. You know, my dad was an officer and everything, so, yeah. Um, did you have any other memorable interactions with any other officers that you'd like to share? <laughs> um, Man, my senior chief, senior chief Bowen, um, just a, a, a black guy, just a really, really, really good guy. I, I mean, I got blessed. I had nearly everybody that I was, you know, my daily, um, my daily schedule. Most people I was around all the time, they were all just good, good people. You know, um, yeah. I mean, you know, you, you, your friends are your division, and. That's who you leave the ship with a lot of the time, most of the time, and come back with, and you know. So those are the guys that I remember the most. Are the guys that I served with every day. Do you keep in contact with them today? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, actually, um, on my way back home, I'm going to go through St. Louis, and there's a, I have a friend that that lives in St. Louis that I was on on board with, uh, and I've been able to go by and see him a couple of times. Um, um, and then I've got a friend that is in Indiana that I talk to all the time, and it's because of Facebook, you know. And we've got the USS New Jersey Facebook site and the reunion thing and all that stuff. So yeah, yeah. What was daily life like on the ship for you? Um, you know, I mean, for me, I'd been getting up so early for so long. You know, uh, when my father, when my 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 dad that was in the military when he died at, I was 13 I went to military school and so I started getting up early for a long time um, I was I was in military you know pretty much for ever that I can remember so um, probably the biggest thing for me to get used to um, uh, was just that spare time between when we were out of sea and that spare time between um, you know my 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 watch to the free time in between. Um, you know um, keeping busy then. Um, 
other than that, it was just, you know, I mean, I, I, I loved getting up and smelling the air and seeing the water all around me, and it was just, it was a good life, you know. How did you typically spend your spare time that you would have? Um, you know, you have gym, we had a gym in there, obviously, we had a gym on there, and then pool tables and things like that. Um, yeah, you go pool tables, how can they stay? But, you know, the ship is hard to move around much, so... Um, Usually, you know, catch up a little bit extra rest. But usually, like I said, usually I was up there with my with my shipmates, hanging around the you know my duty station. My duty. Let's see. Um, were there any admirals on board during your time? Mm -hmm. Yes, Captain Milligan was a. Uh, actually, he turned admiral while I was on while I was on board. Do when I got to him, he was he was captain. Um, but I believe he turned not just just right after I got there. He, he, yeah. Do you remember when that happened? When he turned admiral? I think I do. Yeah, it was a big deal. Yeah, it was huge. Um, I mean, he was a guy that everybody that served under him was crazy about him. Just a you know guy's guy. Um, I mean, come on, you know he's an admiral in the United States Navy, so he's a stud. So yeah. So he had like almost like a celebrity kind I mean, of. I mean, he was just yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just um, just quiet, straightforward, quiet guy. But he always, uh, you you knew that he cared about his crew more than anything in his life. So, yeah. How did he show that? Um, I never saw a sense of of any angst in him at all, any anxiety at all. Um, never. Uh, Anything negative? Um, I don't remember anything negative ever coming out of his mouth. Um, um, even you know, even just going through the system, you know, speaking to the ship crew through the system, um, he always knew he was in total control. And you know, when you're when you're out at sea on a 900 foot ship with 2,700 people, then you want to make sure that your boss man's in total control. So yeah, he always knew he was good. Do you have any other stories that you'd like to share about your time on the ship? Um, you know, I guess one one of the I remember one of the things, and I was actually talking to my son about it was uh, when when I went to my ship, the Missouri at that time, which is where the Japanese surrendered um, on, was on the Missouri. It was in mothballs. It was in dry dock in Bremerton, Washington, and they were pulling it out of dry dock and going to commission it. But it was still, um, it was still had all the the old system, the the none of the nuke stuff, nuclear power stuff, you know, none of that stuff. Just just straight World War Two um, battleship, uh, and but they towed it in all the way to Long Beach from Bremerton, and um, I remember coming when it was coming in. The first time I saw, it, you know, all the guns were covered and all that looked looked like a ghost, and uh, you know, I remember thinking, wow, you know, this. That's the way out. That's way because because they, they turned all the you know battleships into nukes. So they, that 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 was pretty cool watching that ship come in from you know from tow. So yeah. Was did you actually get to interact with any of the crew from the Missouri? Yeah, I did. And we got, I got I went on board. You know, I mean, the USS Missouri. It's where where it all ended. You know, the biggest war. So was there any rivalry between the no. crew? No. No. No rivalry at all whatsoever. And even to this day, people who are on the Wisconsin, the Jersey, the Iowa, um, the Missouri, you know, we we interact on Facebook, and you know, yeah, you know, and you look at, you know, there's the, the children of some of the guys from back in the Vietnam era and all that that were on board, you know, that are saying, yeah, you know, so yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, great. Anything else you'd like to share about your time on the New Jersey before we talk a little bit about your time after? Um, no, I mean, it's, I mean, you know, it's just, uh, I mean, it's, time, it's probably the best time of my life. Yeah, yeah, probably the best time of my life. So after you left the Jersey, when was that first? In November of '87. Okay. Oh, when I left the Jersey? Yes. Yeah, June of 86. Oh, 86. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then, so after that, where did you go? I went to San Diego for a while. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, what did you do? Just to get ready to get out. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
And so then you said in 87 you got out. Mm -hmm. What did you do after leaving uh, the Navy? Uh, <laughs> I chased the girl. <laughs> and then I uh, came back to Oklahoma. Um, and then I, I traveled. Uh, I worked on the road uh, till 90, 91. I worked in Florida, worked in Japan, um, just different areas. And then uh, came back to Oklahoma when his mama got pregnant with him. I was back in Oklahoma then, so, um, um, and I just worked, just worked, that's all I've ever done in my life, just worked. What kind of work did well, you do? Well, I mean, I, I, I was in the power line industry, um, safety, um, and then I had a couple of businesses of my own there for a little while, and just, just work. Are you still working today? No. no. You retired? Yes. Oh. So what do you do now? Um, I'm in ministry. Um, I'm fixing to open a place in Oklahoma for uh, men and women struggling with uh, addictions. It's a faith-based meaning we believe in the Word and that's what, we, that's how I, uh, mm -hmm. that's what I'll be doing for the rest of my life. Um, okay. um, how would you say your life, your time in the service prepared you or affected your life outside of the Navy? Um, well, I mean, if, if I mean, you know, you're, it's military. I mean, they, you, I mean, if there's a standard that's set for being in the military, how you act, um, the way you talk, the way you treat other people. I mean, I think, I think the military, military school, um, being raised in the military, I think all those just, you know, led up, for me, it led up to being an easy transition, really, into the military, but um, just, I mean, um, you know, it, it gave me a sense of, uh, you know, pride, um, obviously, but probably uh, just everything that the military teaches you, you know, if you use it in life, then you can be pretty successful. Is there any example you could give of some value that you took with you? Yeah, just um, just respect everybody, no matter whether they're a kid or whether they're eighty year old vet, whatever. That everybody deserves some form of respect, you know. And um, um, you know, learning how to salute an ensign that's been in the military for a short little time and he comes on board and doesn't know nothing. And you salute him and call him sir, and you know, um, being able to do those things makes it easy transition. And just being able to respect everybody, you know. If you were to give advice to someone looking to get into or join the service mm -hmm. now, what would you say to them? Yeah, and the same thing as I've always said: um, if you're not going to go to college and you don't have any direction, and you don't know what you want to do, I would, if you can. I would join the military. Yeah, I would. I, 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 that's never changed. You know. Um, nowadays, uh, yeah, I think everybody could use a taste of it. Is this the first time you've been back to the New Jersey since yeah. you disembarked? Yeah. How has it been being back? Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's pretty. It's uh, it's a. Uh, I mean, I was I was wondering if I was going to get the same. Um, emotions when I saw it for the first time, like I did the first time I saw it, and yeah, I mean it's it's a pretty big deal for me. Yeah, I'm uh, at that age where I might not get a chance to do this again, you know. So um, yeah, it's it's pretty intense. Yeah. Um, my last question I have for you is sort of like a legacy statement. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, this video it will go on so that future teachers, researchers, historians will be able to watch this, learn a little bit about your life, learn a little bit about the ship's history. Mm -hmm. um, is there any last messages you'd like to leave those future watchers? Yeah, um, well I mean when, 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 some, when something happens in your life that stands out and for this particular time in my life um, when I joined the Navy being on this been on this boat, um, um, you 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 never want to forget that time because um, it's I mean 
you know, I can always go back to that time in my life and remember something really, really good, you know. So if you, if you do something that, that just stands out, you know at that moment, you'll know, well, this is a big deal, and you want to hold on to that. And uh, um, this boat is a big deal, you know. Uh, the, this class is a big deal. And I think that if nothing else, um, if I had to have these in back in service for just for uh, just for show, then it'd be worth it just for that, just to show people, you know, this is what we can do if we want to. So, but yeah. Great. Do you have any final things you'd like to say before I go ahead and wrap up the interview? I mean, just um, yeah, just a good day for me. Okay. Yeah. Great. Well, then I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Okay. Thank you for your service and taking the time to join us today. Mm -hmm. uh, this concludes our interview. This was Kelly Pickle working with the Oral History Program on board the battleship New Jersey in Camden, New Jersey. Today is Thursday, uh, August 8th, 2019, and our interview guest was Mr. Jay Roach from Kingston, Oklahoma, who served on board the battleship New Jersey during the 1980s commission. This recording and any transcripts, abstracts, or indexes made from the recording will be stored in the Oral History Department of the Battleship New Jersey, the Library of Congress Veterans History Project, and the New Jersey State Library System. All recordings will be made available to writers, researchers, teachers, and historians. This is Kelly Pickle, signing off.